Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I did mention in my exosomes three months post update that I was going to make a video um, informing you guys on what a GAD65 antibody is. Um, keep in mind, I'm not a doctor, um, and this the purpose of this video is just so that you guys know what I'm talking about um, in the other video. I also believe I referred to it as GAD56. It's actually GAD65. Um, and I'll try to elaborate a little bit more on why I mentioned it in that other video. Because I, I mentioned it, but I didn't really go into it because I felt that it would be better to make another separate video addressing what GAD65 is. Um, so GAD65 is basically glutamic acid decarboxylase. Um, it's a bio biomarker of autoimmune disorders. It's kind of weird though because it's a biomarker for um, some neurological conditions, like some rare neurological conditions, but then it's a biomarker for some um, like very common um, non-neurological autoimmune conditions. So the non-neurological conditions that are associated with GAD65 antibodies are um, type 1 diabetes, uh, uh, thyroid um, issues, or, or autoimmune thyroid issues, and um, pernicious anemia. The autoimmune neurological conditions that it's associated with are stiff person syndrome, which I was diagnosed with in 2018, um, cerebellar ataxia, and limbic encephalitis. Um, so I don't really know what those other ones are. They are nervous system disorders. Um, so I will probably be talking more about stiff person syndrome because I'm familiar with stiff person syndrome because I was diagnosed with it in 2018. So um, if you want to know what those other ones are, you can Google them. Um, but I think those are the most common disorders that are associated with GAD65 um, antibodies. So basically what this, what happens when you have, um, your body is basically attacking, I believe it's attacking the glutamic acid decarboxylase. And when it attacks that, it reduces, I think, the amount of GABA that you have in your body or its ability to to go wherever it needs to go. And if you're um, if you're not familiar with GABA, I think GABA is kind of, um, it's sort of well known. I think there's even supplements. I think there's even GABA supplements or supplements that increase your GABA um, amount in your body. Um, and I'm sure that some, that everybody's kind of heard of GABA at some point in their lives. And the reason why is because it's associated with stress and anxiety. Um, so, I think GABA supplements, the, the claim is that they will um, like reduce your anxiety and help you feel more calm and that kind of thing. Um, so it reduces having the uh, GAD65 antibodies. Um, and I believe it's anti-GAD65 antibodies. So something that attacks the glutamic acid decarboxylase, it reduces GABAergic transmission in your body. So what does that do? That will increase your stress and anxiety. So you will be um, probably having more anxiety attacks, having more stress. It just makes you um, makes your mood much more unstable. It's also associated with depression, insomnia, um, and also it is associated with schizophrenia. And I believe it is associated with more mental um, mental health or psychiatric uh, disorders. Um, and I think that's kind of maybe the more, um, I don't want to say the, the, uh, the less severe conditions, but it probably is the less severe conditions associated with this. Um, but in more severe cases, uh, it can impair motor functioning of the muscles. So if it attacks the GABA that's, that needs to go to the motor cortex, um, it impairs the the pathways um i guess like the the firing of the the neurons i guess to your muscles and stuff like that and that is why it causes in stiff person syndrome it causes muscle stiffness muscle spasms and that kind of thing now 
there is some controversy around GAD65 when it comes to stiff person syndrome. So I'm going to focus more on that. Um, in the video, in my three-month um, exosomes update, if you haven't watched it, I would recommend you go to the exosomes playlist um, and look up my three-month post-exosomes update. Um, I was tested. I have been tested for GAD65 numerous times. I was tested twice by my regular neurologist and once at a university, not UCLA, but at a different university, and I tested negative all three times. Now, when it comes to stiff person syndrome, and it, it, I was tested for a diagnosis of stiff person syndrome because I had been talking about how my muscles were stiff and how IVIG had helped me, and IVIG is a treatment. It's an approved treatment for stiff person syndrome. So the doctors kind of put the pieces together and they said, okay, well, this sounds like stiff person syndrome, but we need to test your GAD65 antibodies. And I came up negative three times. So um, the controversy is that apparently your GAD65 antibodies need to be in the thousands, which is excessively high um, in order to qualify as a diagnosis for stiff person syndrome. That's kind of one, one argument. There's another argument that GAD antibodies um, shouldn't factor in because there are a lot of people that don't test positive but still have stiff person syndrome and there are people that can test highly positive for GAD65 antibodies and not have any autoimmune disorders at all. So there's that. When it comes to, another argument that I've heard is that when it comes to stiff person syndrome, if you're showing any number for GAD65, whether it's low or high or like barely anything, that it just confirms a diagnosis of SPS. So it doesn't matter if it's in the thousands. If you're symptomatic, if you're complaining about these symptoms and you're telling the doctor, look, I have these symptoms, these muscle problems, and they test you and your GAD65 is like a three, then it, it should technically qualify you for SPS. It should make the diagnosis um, a little bit more clear cut. Now, I think it depends on which doctor you go to. Um, but I had, I tested negative three times. And as soon as I would test negative, the doctors were just like, you don't have it, like get out of here. Um, but finally, I did end up at UCLA because I was like, look, I was on IVIG. IVIG is the only drug that has ever improved my symptoms, you know, and I was working backwards. I was working from treatment to diagnosis, not from diagnosis to treatment. And so when I would tell the story, I could tell that the doctors were putting the pieces together and they knew the few disorders with those symptoms that IVIG treated. So they were working backwards. It was very, very easy for them to, you know, I mean, it's easier to work from treatment to diagnosis, but without the GAD65 antibodies, it makes it very difficult to submit to insurance and to get approved. So I finally ended up at UCLA and the doctor was able to get me approved with zero, zero positive tests because I had a, a negative GAD65, negative everything else. There are other tests um, and there are other antibodies that are also associated with stiff person syndrome, but GAD65 is the most common one. And I tested negative for all of them anyways. Um, and I tested negative with an EMG and EMG is when they stick those needles into your muscles and they kind of deliver these shocks and they can um, sort of read the muscle activity or the motor activity of the muscles. And if you have SPS, um, typically, SPS affects your limbs, your arms, and your legs, but I, mine does not affect my arms and my legs. It's mostly in my thoracic area and a couple of other muscle groups, but mostly in the thoracic area. And they really did not test it, or at least I don't think they tested it very well, but I came up negative. Um, but at UCLA, because I just was very insistent and I said, look, I was already on this medication. I need this medication. And, you know, somehow... She was able to get insurance to approve me for it. Now, fast forward to like a few weeks ago <laughs> when I got my blood work done. I don't know um, why the doctor ran this blood work or why she was checking for GAD antibodies. As I mentioned in my three-month update, 
she tends to be very, um, what is that word? When they, they don't want to talk, they don't want to say too much. <laughs> she's very, uh, like, um, discreet. She's very quiet about the tests that she does and what she's looking for. And I did not know that she had put GAD 65 on the blood work. And so I went, I did my blood test and they sent me my blood work like a week and a half later. And I saw that I had tested positive for GAD 65. My GAD 65 came back at about 80, which is still considered very low for SPS. But when I saw it, I was like, I know this number. I, I know this because this was what we were looking for over and over and over again. And this is why doctors turned me away because I wasn't showing positive for this number. So to me, not only was I, you know, I was like, why am I positive now? But also given that my symptoms had gotten worse, worse post exosomes, um, I was like, holy crap, like it's making my condition worse as I had suspected. Cause you know, if you looked at my update or all of the other updates post exosomes, I felt I feel horrible. Um, my muscle stiffness went through the roof, the pain, the nerve pain, you know, neurological symptoms, just all going crazy. So it made sense that the GAD 65 went up. Now, that being said, you know, when I went and followed up with my doctor, again, she's not telling me why she tested for it. Um, she kind of even told me she's like yeah your numbers are going down and I, I was looking at her and I'm like we didn't test for this before we never tested for GAD antibodies um and she didn't tell me why she had tested for it like I said she kind of has this philosophy that she knows what she's doing just trust her so I kind of was like I'm just gonna trust the process but I told her I said that's positive and I do think that I need to tell my neurologist at UCLA, the one that diagnosed me, that I turned up with this. So I'm in the process of figuring out what I'm going to tell her because obviously all these other experimental treatments that I'm doing, are I probably can't mention that or I'm going to have to sort of work my way around it because, um, yeah, she's probably not going to be happy that, <laughs> that I did you know, some other experimental treatment. So that's basically what GAD 65 is. Um, if you are having, to be honest, I don't really even know, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of conditions you can, you can, like I said, you can come up positive for GAD 65 and not have anything at all. You can come up negative for GAD 65 and be very symptomatic. The other thing about GAD 65, and you're going to see this in a future video. I don't know if it's gone up yet. I did do a video on my SPS journey and how I was able to get to my SPS diagnosis. And you will see that I, you know, I mentioned that I was GAD 65 negative. But there's also, um, the other thing I talk about is that GAD 65 is not like, for whatever reason, the, even though they say you need it to be in the thousands in order to get a diagnosis of SPS, there's also... They, they haven't really seen a concrete correlation between the severity of the condition and the number, you know, the, like, for example, the higher the number, the more severe you are. They haven't seen that kind of correlation. There are people that will have a very low GAD and very severe symptoms. And there are people, like I said, that will have high GAD antibodies and maybe asymptomatic or, or don't have as severe symptoms as someone else, you know? So there is that controversy, although they say that GAD65 antibodies do appear in about 80% of cases um, of SPS, which again, I had previously heard that it was like, that there was like um, a quarter of people with SPS don't even present with GAD65. So I don't know. And if you Google GAD65 and SPS, it, it will tell you that there's just a lot of controversy, a lot of mixed messaging. There's not, it's not incredibly concrete. And that's what I had mentioned to my neurologist at UCLA 
I said, look, I've read, you know, the information that's out there. And even though I'm testing negative, it doesn't necessarily mean um, that I don't have SPS. And, you know, other doctors had told me like, oh, you're negative. It doesn't, you know, you don't have this. Um, granted, I have been previously diagnosed with Lyme disease, but at a certain point, I was like, this is no longer Lyme disease. This is something else. The other thing that the doctor told me, my, my doctor at UCLA, she said, you sound like you have a mild case of stiff person syndrome, which again, without, I mean, now that I'm seeing the antibodies, yes, it's possible that it, it could, that it could be a mild case, but I guess because it's in my own body, I'm just like, how is this a mild case? I, I don't know. But that was another, um, Another reason why I decided to pursue, you know, stem cells and exosomes is because I was told I had a mild case. Um, in severe cases of SPS um, and severe cases of multiple sclerosis, they do um, stem cell transplants along with chemotherapy, and that has put people into remission. And that's one of the only treatments that has put people into remission for these conditions. There's really no... Um, there's really no good treatment for SPS from what I know. There are treatments. They can bring your symptoms down. They can make your life manageable and or they can make your symptoms manageable and let you have a more normal life. But from what I'm seeing, there is no remission from SPS. Um, so because I was aware that, you know, the doctor said I had a mild case, I thought I would give exosomes a go and see if that did anything um, because if I'm a mild case and maybe it can help. But again, I don't really know if it is or isn't at this point. Um, but yeah, I think that's as much as I know about GAD65. If you want to know more, Google it or talk to your doctor. Um, I'm sure there's, there's more conditions that are associated with it, but those are sort of like the main ones. And I wanted to focus more on the neurological ones because that's my experience. That's what I have. Um, but yeah. And, and I have noticed since doing the exosomes and since I had the flare up, yes, my muscle stiffness and the spasms, you know, it, it actually feels like it's spasming now. I've had burning neurological pain, you know, weird prickly pain. Um, I have my anxiety, depression, panic attacks, you know, they did go up. Um, insomnia has been, you know, has been acting up. And so, yeah, I mean, I would, I would say that GAD 65 is definitely associated with that. And my number came up higher. So it caused my number to spike. That is my hypothesis or my guess, because the doctor, my doctor did not really want to say too much. You know, she had told me, she's like, your GAD 65 is going down. And I just looked at her like, I've never tested positive, but I was like, I don't want to fight with you. <laughs> I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to figure this one out on my own. She is very, uh, like I said, she's very secretive and she's very, she, she's very overly cautious. She's a very nervous person. And so I was like, you know what? I'm not going to, you know, fight her on this one. Um, I'm just going to kind of figure it out on my own. So that's GAD 65, not GAD 56, GAD 65. Um, and if you have any questions, leave them down be below. I'll try my best to answer them. But like I said, I'm not a doctor. This is just a little bit that I know about these antibodies. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.